Hi, and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Sarah Peternell. I'm the owner of Family Nutrition Services. I specialize in helping people who have thyroid conditions and especially uh, people who have Hashimoto's. I myself have Hashimoto's and so I've spent a lot of time personally researching and also a lot of my uh, schooling and education and continuing education have really gone towards this very important um, health condition and this very important subject um, that I love to help educate people about and I love to help people who are um, suffering with conditions of their thyroid. I tend to work with a lot of women. Um, of course, women are uh, one of the primary um, groups of, of of patients um, that a lot of uh, doctors are seeing um, with Hashimoto's and Graves and uh, thyroid disorders. But today what I want to talk about is the ever-increasing number of men with Hashimoto's and how this may be possibly an underdiagnosed condition for many men. Um, the thing that I wanted to share in this video today is that, you know, Hashimoto's, while it is primarily a female problem, it does affect men. Um, and the numbers um, are, are quite uh, convincing and actually quite uh, uh, concerning, if you will. Um, Hashimoto's affects about 14 million Americans. And of this group, more than 2 million of those are men. So it's a pretty large uh, slice of that that population of people who are affected and I am seeing uh, very commonly in my practice that you know these autoimmune conditions that are on the rise affect everyone young old um, men and women every race and every socioeconomic group are really um, affected by this but men are often excluded from the conversation around Hashimoto's because so much of the majority of our research that's published on Hashimoto's and hypothyroidism is is focused on women and the interaction with other women's hormones. So when it comes to men, sometimes men may go into the doctors and their thyroid may be overlooked. Um, they may you know, be considering potentially low testosterone or maybe um, issues with low libido. The doctor might be testing them for even um, uh, other you know, conditions, maybe cardiovascular, et cetera. When it's just as simple for men, to also be screened by their doctors with a very easy to do and a very common um, thyroid blood test. I have so many uh, men clients that I'm seeing, uh, especially more recently, and they, they come to me wondering if these problems, these conditions that they're experiencing are all in their heads. Um, and the doctor might just say, you know, you're just working too hard, you're getting older, um, or these are just common things uh, that men deal with. Um, and again, a lot of times it may be even misdiagnosed as something else. Um, I actually am working with a gentleman right now um, whose uh, hypothyroidism, his Hashimoto's, was actually first just diagnosed as um, depression. And he initially went on a antidepressant um, with the guidance of his physician and came to find out um, you know, a little while later that actually there was some thyroid uh, dysregulation that was going on there. So um, I wanted to really reach out to men today in this video and let them know that you know the symptoms that affect men can be similar to what affect women, um, but they also have their own special set of concerns. So the first thing is that you know, when we think about um, thyroid, low thyroid function or hypothyroidism, we think about weight gain, we think about fatigue, um, cold extremities, maybe constipation, dry skin. This is pretty much your very typical checklist when you um, are researching and learning about um, the, the, the common symptoms with hypothyroidism. But men also um, may have some other issues like losing muscle mass or losing their own their strength um, for really no, no real explainable reason. Um, a lot of the men that I work with in my practice, they may report also uh, probably the, the most commonly reported thing is brain fog, this diminished ability to think clearly and make decisions and just feeling sharp in their thinking or in their, um, their work that they're doing, um, feeling like they're kind of scatterbrained or maybe like they just don't process information as easily. Um, that seems to be the number one thing. And again, this is where doctors may think, well, you're maybe just going through some depression or maybe you are just, this is just a sign of, you know, getting older. So um, other things, um, as I said, lack of drive or maybe lowered libido, um, feeling like they're, they're a wrapping, rapidly aging, like, you know, quickly losing hair or maybe this loss of um, muscle mass, um, feeling really fatigued. Um, that can be one, too, um, where guys might just chalk that up to like, God, I'm just getting older and I don't know what's going on. But really, these, these signs of like a slowed metabolism and rapid aging can also be related um, to... Uh, the, the possibility of maybe some Hashimoto's or hypothyroid. 
also changes in digestion. You know, if you're a gentleman who has had pretty regular bowel movements, no real issues to speak of, and all of a sudden you're dealing with bloating after meals, constipation, more gas, irregularity. Um, these are certainly things to speak with your doctor about. You know, recent changes in your digestion may be pointing to something going on um, with, with other parts, uh, you know, uh, systemically in your body or your endocrine system. So a diagnosis of Hashimoto's, you know, really should be based on these signs and symptoms. And doctors, we want them to be able to track uh, your blood work over time to see if there are some noticeable changes in things like the TSH, which is thyroid stimulating hormone. If that's something that they've been testing in you for a while, which is pretty common with maybe an annual exam, um, that can can be maybe one of the very first signs. If your doctor notices that maybe there are some additional changes uh, present in any of your blood work, they may refer you to a specialist, like an endocrinologist, um, and they may actually uh, you know, refer you for a series of additional tests with some more expansive review of things like um, total T3 or total T4, free T3, free T4, um, reverse T3, um, T3 uptake. They may actually also want to look at some um, anti-thyroid antibodies. And, and the presence of antibodies to the thyroid are really the predominant diagnostic uh, factor, diagnostic criteria, criteria, if you will, for diagnosing Hashimoto's. Now, as a holistic um, nutritionist, I don't diagnose uh, conditions, um, but I do work with many, many people after they have either received maybe an inconclusive diagnosis or they've just received a diagnosis that they do have, say, for example, the antithyroid antibodies, and some irregular thyroid blood work and they're ready to start working on their diet and come in and, and talk with me about some things that we can do. So for my Hashimoto's clients, for men and women, I do recommend some additional testing to look a little bit deeper um, into what maybe is not working in the body. I definitely suggest IgG antigen uh, food testing, which is food intolerance testing. Um, and I also suggest micronutrient testing and looking at maybe the deeper patterns within the body as far as um, deficiencies or correlative patterns of deficiencies that may be uh, you know, pointing towards some dysfunction in the endocrine system or within um, the thyroid. So um, while the, the, the blood tests that a doctor will run can be definitive and diagnostic, there are some um, of these tests that I'm mentioning that we want to really understand maybe where the root cause of thyroid dysfunction or autoimmunity is coming from in the body. Um, again, this can really help us to look at the body in total and look at the thyroid condition, not just as the, a thyroid issue by itself, but also as a bigger problem maybe within the immune system or within the digestive system. Um, here's the thing, and I, I just wanna say this for a moment, you know, for guys, a lot of the men that I work with, they all admit readily that when they first realize something is amiss with their health, they're a little bit nervous or shy or um, worried to go in and visit with their doctor about some of these things that they, they notice. Even if it is just, even if it just happens to be aging, um, these are sometimes difficult and maybe even taboo subjects uh, to discuss. It can be challenging for both men and women to admit that maybe they are facing a, a problem with their health, and especially if you don't know where to turn or where to go to get um, you know, the proper information and, and education um, about how you can start turning your health around and what type of a role you can play in being very proactive um, and, and really uh, being the manager of your best health. But if you wait too long with some of these symptoms, um, undiagnosed hypothyroidism and undiagnosed Hashimoto's actually can lead to health risks um, that can have a greater, uh, you know, complication or a greater uh, set of symptoms in the long run. There can be, um, you know, cardiovascular impl implications. Um, there can be serious implications for the immune system. Um, and there can also be even just, you know, issues with, say, uh, managing blood sugar or, you um, you know, regulating other hormones in the body. And so it is very important for men to not only know that getting uh, annual thyroid testing is a way to, to pay attention to and track this important gland in the body, but also that you can ask for and, you know, really dig a little deeper with your doctor to get some of these um, more 
advanced tests. Um, once that has been, once you have done that, then it's important to come in and meet with a nutritionist so we can start going through some of the food intolerance connections, some of the nutritional deficiency connections, and we can start to work together on putting together an optimal diet to help you reach uh, your, your best health and get you feeling good again. That's really what we want to do. I have a lot of other videos on my YouTube channel about Hashimoto's. Some of these might be pertinent to you, um, especially guys. I've got videos about if you should be eating more protein. I've got videos if you should be consuming alcohol, videos about um, what happens if you're drinking caffeine and how to do that uh, safely. Um, I have uh, a lot of other uh, videos with information, so please go back and check out some of my uh, playlists in the Hashimoto's category. And you can also subscribe to this channel and like uh, these videos um, to continue to have these types of videos added to your YouTube playlist. If you subscribe to my channel, you'll be notified each week when new videos uh, come out. Um, also, please do check out my blog at sarahpeternell.com. I have a whole article that I've written about uh, men and Hashimoto's um, because it is something that I'm seeing so much more commonly in my nutrition practice. And I really want to be able to inform and educate uh, the gentlemen out there uh, that this, this is a, a common concern and it is something that we can most definitely work together uh, to get you living your best life again. So again, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for, for liking this video and um, I'll be back soon with lots more videos. So thanks for watching.